All right. Barber Card Success, brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy, JC, Crown Cuts Academy, Bristol, spreading love the Tri-City ways. But no, spreading love is the only way is the Crown Cuts way. Today, we got a special episode for you. We're going to rock the mic coming off this all-star break weekend. Shout out to Jason Tatum. Hey, MVP. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but today, we got a special guest. But before our special guest comes on, we're going to continue our student stories, which is a big hit. We're going to let our co-hosts introduce themselves. Jordan Barr, J. Baba on Instagram. That's J B A. Two H's and a B A. Okay. Yeah, I gotta I gotta spell it for him. Spell, spell it out. Man. Okay. It's the sound of it. You just you just gotta ad lib. Yeah. Am I Fields? Am I your barber, man, in Virginia? Yes. Am I your barber on Instagram? Oh yeah, check us out. How we doing things? And a special guest, introduce yourself. Deshannon Bradley. Instagram Deshannon Bradley. <laughs> <Yeah>. Deshannon <laughs> got the R and B voice. <laughs> <laughs> You come with the bass, like baby face. Like, go ahead again, introduce yourself one more time. DeShannon Bradley. Oh, uh, to be Instagram. Harder than <laughs> DeShannon underscore Bradley. Oh, man. That's that R&B voice. That's okay. That's what's up. Or is it just the mics? <laughs> I don't know. The mics are smooth. Like, they sound real soft and light. Yeah, it's real soft and light. It's the mic. But again, shout out to our feed spot for our top 25 ranking in the world. Hey, we love that. We love that. Thank you. Keep coming with the reviews. We love that too. Keep sending our, yo, share it, like it, tell a friend, tell somebody about Barbacar Success because this, this is the place where we drop jewels, get you up the park, the new trends, any type of conversation in this industry that you can think about. We've probably covered it and we have so much more to cover. And our top spots, where are our top spots again? We got the UK, United, the um, US, of course, Canada, Canada, uh, uh Iceland. Iceland. Australia. Yeah. And then... That's fine. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's mean the top... That's that's some major countries. That's I mean, big. yeah. I mean, it, it, at least in the barber world, I think. Yeah. yeah. When I think about it. That's big. And then we come to your favorite spot. Madagascar. Let's go. We got We need a list. Spotify needs to give us a list of the countries that we that are listening. I think Mitch got that. Mitch can get that for us. You got that, Mitch? Okay. Yeah. And we can just go there and do, hopefully one day we're going to do a, like a, a pop-up. Pull from Madagascar. Yeah, just do pop some up cuts, do, yeah. podcast. podcast. We're getting, we get, we getting ready to be on the road and just pull up. Yeah, one of my favorite uh, guys I watch on Instagram, I went to his barber show one time. And what he started doing, he calls it Barberville on Instagram. Yep. He's been going to visit other barber shops yep. and just Some, doing like a yes. showcase of the other barber shops. That's big. He's out of Charlotte. Yeah. 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 You know you, you know him? Yep. Of course you do. That's <laughs> dude, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's big. I, I've, been, I've been following him too. It's big. It's big. But hey, before we even jump on this podcast, because we're going to talk, we're we going to continue our series, Student Stories. Let's talk about what Jalen Rose said. Oh, about the million dollars, uh, paying, uh, not million, but $100 every barber I, for a, a, at least $100. At least 100 for, for a dead barber. I, I am for it and I'm against it because most people think that it's just $100 for a haircut. I don't, the way, I understand what he meant, mm -hmm. but Jalen Rose is a millionaire. If he wasn't a millionaire, would he still, still say the same thing? I'm just happy he did it because we've been getting some bad press when it comes to athletes because Patrick Beverly had something to say. Right. And then uh, Michael Parsons had something to say. Right. They both had something to say negatively about paying barbers, but these guys aren't going to walk into their local barbershop because they're going to get mobbed. You know, they're like, right. sign my autograph. You know, oh, you're Michael Parsons. Like, so if blah, somebody yeah, coming to your spot. Coming to, to your take, spot, take you got a you. personal barber. Yeah, you got you got blessed them at least. Exactly. Yeah. You know what so, I'm saying? Yeah, you but, blessed. And that's what I think Jalen Rose is talking about. He's not talking about just the casual observer, people just coming to hard work, just coming every day. I'm paying a hundred dollars. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a bit of a stretch in the yeah. range. You know what I mean? We, you're gonna pay us what we're worth, and whatever you're worth and whatever you feel that's comfortable in your city, you should charge for it. Hundred percent. I just feel like people don't understand uh, coming from because I used to think when I was younger, I used to think of that back when haircuts were twenty five, I thought that was a lot. So I mean, once you become a barber, I guess you can you can really understand because you know what it takes and what you 
have to do, you know what I'm saying? To I mean, but I'm not but, twisted with it where everybody's coming and beating people in the head now. Yeah. You shouldn't do that. You should kind of get to the market value and just give people, you know what I mean, a reasonable, a good, you, what you're worth, a good price. I mean, if people are paying it, you charge a 200 haircut and people want to pay that and your books are full, hey, I'm high for you. I mean, no doubt. I want doubt, you to get no it. No doubt. You know what I mean? But we don't want to push people away from the industry. Of course not. I don't want that because everybody can't go out there and just drop $100 every time. And we don't want to push people away from the industry and thinking that because we barbers and we real good hair cutters and specialize in this skill, if you're not coming with a C note, we can't even look at you. Yeah. We, we, we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that, that thought process. You know what I mean? I see what you're saying. You don't want people to think that. It it is uh well, you're so divarish. Yeah, you know, it's like too good for people. Yeah, yeah people yeah. look down on you. Still show love, you know what I mean, and know your worth. And a lot of people shared it. Like I, I had it on, I saw it on Facebook in multiple different places, like right. different ESPN, Bleach Report, whatever. The one I shared said, you know, it had the post of Jalen Rose, and then it said, "What are your thoughts?" Because mm-hmm. I felt like if I just posted it, right, I would make people feel like. I should get $100 a haircut. Yeah, and that's, not, and, that's, and that's not what you, you, you just wanted to open up a dialogue for a conversation. What do yeah. you think, DeShannon? Um, Palm still sweaty? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I mean, it's, uh, it's understandable. Like, uh, if you got it and you like your haircut, yeah. Like, if, he's, um, if he's a good barber, that's what he wants, pay it. What are you, what are you looking to charge when you come out of school? Me, probably about forty, fifty dollars. Okay. When I get out of school, that's uh, that's in the shop, closed like after hours, probably around seventy five hundred. So you're sitting on on the top tier and locally in this area, I'd say that's that's probably. Oh yeah, I won. Uh, I won the competition a couple of weeks ago. You know what I mean? I'm... Okay, that's, that price went out right after that. <laughs> <laughs> it was forty, forty five. We if you got the, you got the chip. It's up again. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, I'm not, um, I'm not consistent yet. I'm like, uh, I'm just getting back in, it and I took a I took a little break from it. So once I get that consistency, um, and and when know. people when people paying that, they want the experience. You're not just gonna be the Every day, barber just playing the games and just coming late and not having your shop in disarray and you're not able to give people the experience because having a haircut should be an experience. It, just, it shouldn't be just you come in, you don't even have a conversation with the client, you cut him up and say, hey, has a $100. That's almost disrespectful. And honestly, in reality, I mean, even if you are the dopest barber in the world, I mean, your cuts are crispy. Nobody's hitting lines like you're hitting – the average consumer don't see hair like we see hair. Right. You know, unless you're cutting barbers, they're not really going to see it like they see it. I mean, a clean haircut, at the end of the day, it's a haircut. Yep. Like, a normal person is just like, yeah, it was a good haircut. I mean, obviously, there's different, you're going to have different skill levels, but human, the average human is not going to see the fade blurry like we see the fade. It just ain't like that. Yep. So, I mean, I would just wanted to kind of touch a little... See what see what see what you guys' thoughts are, and if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, hey, hit us up, and we can maybe have a discussion about that one day, a full episode on haircut prices and what we think and what we feel. Mm-hmm. But today we're gonna continue our series of student stories, and we got our man DeShannon on it, DeShannon. So I mean, introduce yourself and where you from, and and how what what piqued your interest in this skill of barbering. Uh, hey, I'm Shannon. <laughs> but nah, uh, I had a homeboy from uh from my neighborhood who uh he was cutting hair. He had been cutting hair when we was young, and this actually was like one of my first loves. I had started cutting hair like I think in like the fifth, sixth grade. Dang, I cut a, I cut one of my homeboys' hair. And I really didn't know the technique or nothing. I just seen I was mimicking what my uh what my homeboy was doing. So like I kind of gave them like a a half fade, half bow cut, mm-hmm. and they laughed me out of school. Like, <laughs> hey, matter of fact, they laughed me and him out. I had to call my dad, like, "Daddy, come pick me up." <laughs> <laughs> but then I dropped the clippers after that, and like I man, I said, "No, nah, I'm." I found a pair of clippers. Before that, I found my uh, my sister had an old pair of clippers. I found them in the attic, and like. 
and I picked them up. And like I was turning my uh, my brother's room into a barber uh, a barber shop or whatever. I I um I ripped my I wrote my um my prices down like on a big poster and everything. My How mom, old were you then? I was I was like in the fifth sixth grade. Like oh, my so, mom you, and, huh? so you already had a marketing plan? Yeah, yeah. I'm like it was like from this grade to that grade, such and such price. Like it was like a dollar fifty. You know what I'm saying? Like from this grade to that grade, it was like two fifty and on up. That. That's <laughs> wild. Like, and now you're 75 when you get out. What's crazy <laughs> is my mom had kept that poster though. You know what I'm saying? Like, and uh, I got locked up when I was um, back in 2012. And I really had time to sit down and think and like what I really wanted to do when I got out. And um, boom, I started going to school in Georgia. And my mom had that poster laminated. I don't know if she had it uh, laminated before all this or after, but she kept it all those years. That's you know wild. I'm like, I'm 35 now, so this had to have been, when I first got into barber school, it had to have been, I was like 27, 28. <clears throat> so barbering has always been your first love. Did you do anything after the, the, the fourth grade, and did you try any new um, hobbies, something that you like, wanted to do something when, when they laughed you out the I try to breed pit bulls. <laughs> yeah, I try to breed pit, pit bulls and, uh, and shoot dice. I mean, that was it. Hey, I mean, you have, to, you, have, you have to find your path somehow. You know what I mean? So so talk about that time when you left the barbering industry when you was about, what, you said in the fourth grade around that time? About fifth, sixth grade. Right. <clears throat> so during that gap from then to when you started barber school, what, 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 what were you doing? Man, I was in the street. I was in the streets. Like, um, but it wasn't it. And like, all kind of stuff came with that. And like, I got shot four times. Uh, just a whole bunch of it's not the same feeling that you get when you're doing something that you love to do you know what I'm saying I wish I would have had somebody back then tell me to keep going you know what I'm saying like cause you can get your barber license at like 16 right yeah you get in yeah. school now yeah like so I wish I would have been able to know that I wish I would have known that cause I would have I would have I would have easily uh, stayed in school and did that you know what I'm saying so did you cut when you was when you was doing time? Did you did you do some cuts in there? No, uh, uh-uh, I ain't cut. I ain't do none of that. Actually, what really made me want to start cutting again was when I when I got out. I was in Georgia when I was locked up, <clears throat> and I got out. And as soon as I got out, I went to my homeboy's shop. He's from here, but uh, he had did some time too. And as soon as he got out, he was like, "Man, forget this. I'm I'm about to do something with my life." And he went to Georgia, where his mom stayed at. Got in school, and he had um, he was working at a shop right off a of peach tree, like by the underground. You know what I'm saying? And he had uh, it, the whole setup was beautiful. It was like a twenty chair shop. Like the owner was charging like three hundred per chair. True. He was making like twenty four thousand a month. And like, and then it intrigued me because like one time I seen the owner come in. And he knew how to cut, and like he had, he had uh, had somebody come in. He grabbed the shears. I ain't never even seen nobody cut with shears. Like I was like, oh, this dude's sweet. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm so, but uh, and it was right in front of the park, like in a TV setup inside the shop. And, like he had the brick flooring. Everything about it was sweet. So you remember that vision? So Jordan, hearing what he's saying right now, <clears throat> just giving his testimony in the beginning. What is what's going through your mind? What are, what are you thinking? Um, I really don't know right now. Like, uh, I'm just trying to soak in like his story. Right. So, it's, just kind of mesmerized. Yeah, because I I like his story right now. Because it's it's nice this to hear your story. I'm like I like I'm liking your story right now. So I'm so intrigued from what he's saying right now. Because it's you know coming from. That's why I like doing a series because it's like when I like I like hearing people's stories and everybody has down. a different path. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, what do you think of that mind? What goes through your mind? Uh, I mean, I think about like, um, so I didn't, I would, I didn't really go to a barber growing up, but my dad cut my hair, and um, you know, he, I, I, speaking of getting laughed out of school, one time uh, my dad cut my hair and he gapped my head, so uh, I got real dark hair, so I took a sharpie 
and I just yeah. <laughs> the thing, and then I told my friends about it, and Enhanc- they even know about en- enhancements. Yeah, I, I, enhancements. I shouldn't even say nothing, but I told my friends like, "Yo, my dad messed me up. Look, I got sharpie." They told everybody. Everybody's coming by my head like, "Look, look at this sharpie in his head." But I never was really exposed to a barbershop setting. Even when I did go get my hair cut professionally, it wasn't really like I didn't get it cut often. So to hear his story and think about experiencing like that shop vibe for the right. first time, like I never experienced that till I became a barber myself. So like it would be an eye open experience for sure. I, I can imagine. I think it's funny because most barbers do have a story. Cause I remember like a couple of times, um, I remember I hated cutting my hair when I was a kid, mm-hmm. hated cutting my hair. And one day my mother was like, you gotta go to school. And every, most boys have that problem. Come here, let me comb your hair. And yeah. I was like, nah, she went, she had some <laughs> nah. shares and just cut it. Not even clippers. Yeah, that roots haircut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was all matted in the back and stuff. Right. So I went to school <laughs> all chopped up. And I'm like, I had a hat on. And you know, everybody like, take your hat off. And teachers are like, take your hat off. When it came off, it was like. <laughs> Put your hat back on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I can, I can identify when you say, man, I got laughed out. And then I got a love for barbering a certain time. And then I started cutting my own hair. But then I gave myself a part. And the part was too wide down the middle. <laughs> And everybody was like, yo, you got the Mandela part. <laughs> 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 That's like, and I was like, oh, man. So I can identify when people laughing at you when you cut your hair. Mm-hmm. Because most kids, I mean, in that age range from elementary school, everybody's cracking jokes. You got a bunch of jokesters. And a lot of times people just cracking jokes just to kind of take the heat off of them because they might have some hole in their shoes yeah. or pants might have, or something. You know what I mean? But, oh, oh no, nah, I got a, he got a gap. Let me get him fuzzy before somebody see me and they're going to jump on me. Yeah, they, they was on. I should have said that to nobody. You know what I'm saying? But. See, now I try to think about it because I kind of always mess with Clippers kind of ever since I was little because I used to, I mean, one time I took my dad's Clippers and I cut one of my eyebrows off. Oh, my whole think you, you thinking you Big Daddy Kane? Yeah, and Three I, I had I had on. I put my hat on. I was like this. <laughs> so and they was like, "Why you got your hat on like that?" And both I, like Soldier Boy. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like "Dang, man!" And I used to, I used to do my mustache in high school, and people used to make fun of me because they said, "Look, I got a Hitler stash," because I made it too too thin. Well, it was just like, yeah, too thin and like too close together. It was and like it, the, it the, width, the, width, the width of your nostril. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Hitler Yeah, style. I was like, dang, man. But I, so, and this series is so important because hearing our stories, hearing different people's stories, people will be able to identify with those things and help them make their decision to go to school. So so now, DeShannon, you, you said you started barber school in Atlanta. You've started barber school how many different times before this last time? Uh, I started in 2014. The main thing was I never, I never gave up. It was something I really, I got a passion for. But uh, it was always something coming up. And like I'd have to leave Atlanta, come back here. I went to the school in Bristol that you own, but it was under Miss Ann at the time. I, I started that. Then uh, I was having some money issues. Fell back for a little while. Then that's when I ended up coming to your school. You know what I'm saying? So, and then I had to take that little uh, that little four year leave. <laughs> you know? I mean, no, just be transparent. What was the four year leave? Because four year leave was uh, I was in Atlanta for a year. You know what I'm saying on the low, but I did three years in uh, in the feds. And so, and these things are important for people to hear because. They, that was the hardest time for me, though, because man, look, I I started, I, I had endless nights looking at that cell and just thinking, like, dang, where could I have been right now, barber? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was real hard for me. That's when I started. I, I actually was cutting a little bit um, while I was locked up, because you know, uh, people. I don't know if y'all know, but people locked up, they real talented. Yeah. And like, yeah. and if you can cut with just a regular razor and comb. You know what I'm saying? Like holding the comb over the, I mean, holding the razor over the comb. And I done seen a whole bunch of people do some nice fades like that, Mm -hmm. like lineups and everything. But yeah, so as soon as I got out, I already knew my plan. Like I didn't waste no time. As soon as I got out, I I called Craig. I was a little ashamed at first, you know what I'm saying? Like, because I'd be reading the Bible and stuff. Like, so I kind of got out of character um, when I got locked up. And I know Craig, like he a good dude, 
And uh, me and Craig been rocking for what, about 20 years or something? Right. So I was kind of like, like nervous about calling him because, you know what I'm saying, I ain't want nobody judging me and stuff. Like, But it wasn't like that at all. He had, he had uh, opened his arms to me. Like, man, he, he turned me on to vocational rehab. They paid for the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? Like... That's dope too. That's another thing that people like gotta <laughs> overcome. Like not necessarily overcoming just the financial and the the um you know like the other things like the mental uh, aspect. Yeah, of it. you you overcoming the the fear of judgment to go and try something for the third time to put you are where you are. That that is so powerful because some people or will start something and quit it and be too ashamed to come back to it because they're afraid people would judge them because of that. But, but you've done that multiple times and here you are again and you're getting it done. And that's a big deal, man. Sometimes it takes more than one time, twice, two, three times to do it. That's a major had, testament. Cause I had, uh, like my brother, like today we was, we was talking about the same thing. He's, a. Uh, He's talked to Craig multiple times about coming to school, and he signed up at least twice, and he didn't. He just wouldn't show up because he was he was scared. Like you know, you don't want to. He's scared. He thinks he's failed too many times, and he don't want to fail again. But the only time he fails is when you stop trying. Mm. So that's what I'm saying. So it's it it, may, it all comes to L connects now because I mean he's going through the same thing that you went through. So I'm trying to get him into believing in himself and not to give up on himself. Which he's I think he's still there getting it now because he just had a son. So he's really start trying to like get something going with his life. He's twenty nine, so he's about to be thirty. He's like, bro, I'm about to be thirty. I ain't got nothing under my belt. I want something for my kids to look up to. He said, I think it's time for me to, you know, take that step. So it's dope that you said that. Yeah, like uh and it's not even the third time, it's the fourth time because started in Georgia. And I started in Georgia, then I ended up Bristol. Stopping, but then I went back to Georgia again, you know what I'm saying, to the same school. So then I went to Bristol. That's three times. That's three times. And then I came, so actually like five times. So five times, you see what I'm saying? So that's a, that's a testament to your perseverance and not wanting to give up because your eyes was on the prize. I got to be the world's longest student. <laughs> nah, nah, because if you ever stop being a student, then you already dead. You right. Know? Yeah. But the important things is how these stories is gonna are gonna help people around the country and around the world is letting them know that hey, and even you quote a lot of the Bible verses, you fall doesn't mean you got to stay down. No, no, not at all. God gives me the strength. I'm like man, look, I, I mean, one time I was in barber school uh, in Georgia, and um, you know how you got to have like a certain amount of hours before you get on the floor. Yeah. Well, um, I always wanted to stay in school, like after school. Uh, night classes, and uh, my instructor, he had he had took it upon himself just to let me cut, like when nobody else was there at night. And I remember the first time I put my that smock on, man, it got hot to death. In that <laughs> I got nervous if I was dude that I was cutting. I wasn't there wasn't no way I'd let me cut my. I know that head. feeling. You sweating, yeah, but hands like, wet. <laughs> I used to always. This was. Uh, I used to always read the Bible. Um, I try to read the Bible about three times a day. So that'd be like the first thing I do when I wake up. And I was rushing out the door that day. So I'm in class and I got the Bible inside the book. And I'm I'm acting like I'm reading a book, but I'm really reading the Bible. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, Because that's how I just get my day started. I feel like God had blessed that. And so he comes to me. He's like, uh, Bradley, I need you out on the floor. <laughs> And I'm like, man, uh, you know, I ain't got, I ain't, I ain't supposed to be out on the floor right now, like, cause the director was there and everything. He was like, man, don't worry about it, I got you. You know, you know who was like that too? Who? Oh. Jordan. That's why I'm laughing. I had to twist his arm to get on the floor. And so boom, <laughs> he was like, uh, I was like, all right, I'll be right there. I wasn't finished reading yet, so I'm still reading. And he came back. He said, Bradley, I told you I need you on the floor, man. Come on. And he came over to me, and he seen me reading the Bible. He said, oh, man. He said, I went and never expected you to be reading the Bible. He was like, uh, he was like Deacon Bradley. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, that's all right right there. He was like, um, go ahead and finish reading real quick. Uh, that's what you do every morning. Go ahead and finish that. Come out here as soon as you get done. I need you, though. And then he pointed at the Bible. He said, you know what it says in there, right? I'm like, what? He was like, uh, God uh, takes from the wicked and gives to the righteous. Mm -hmm. 
And like, and he pointed at the whole school, you know, like he was doing like this while he was talking about it. So then that inspired me to, uh, and then looking at Craig and then looking at my director there, like barbering ain't just where I want to stop at. You know what I'm saying? Like I want my own schools, shops, with S's on it. Like I want to be like the George Jefferson of barber shops and barber schools. Like, so. That's dope. Yeah. <clears throat> That's big. So going through the time when you say that you was discouraged and you was kind of intimidated to even come and an attempt again, talk about that. My last time? Yeah. <laughs> I was at the park and I was just, I had already been out for, um, I've been out for a few days, probably a few weeks. And there was this wind on me that I wasn't doing nothing with myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was already, I had already had things going for me. <laughs> Before, you know what I'm saying? Like the dogs, uh, real estate, all that stuff. So I called the school, and um, I was hoping you would be there, but then I was hoping not because I wasn't <laughs> ready to talk to you yet. But uh, somebody, I think Bobby or somebody picked up the phone. I'm not sure who picked up the phone, but they ended up giving me your number. And then I called you, and then just the way you embraced me, you know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't talked to me in a while. I haven't talked to you in a while. And just the way you came at me, like, man, that, that was just like a big relief to me. You know what I'm saying? You like, like the prodigal son. <laughs> yeah, that's what. It, that's exactly what it was, like the prodigal son. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he went, He ain't asked me nothing about none of that. He said, get the like, fatty calf. We about to have a party. <laughs> we about to have a party. <laughs> yeah. And like, I was so amped up when I got off the phone with him. We went straight to a vocational rehab and, like, Hunting them down. We went to like two different places where we thought they was. So talk about the process of vocational rehab, what that is and what it can do for someone who come out of jail and how it could help them <clears throat> um, further their education or just further their career. Man, it's a beautiful thing because, uh, you know, a lot of people, they, um, especially if you're in the street and like you're not used to working or something like so you feel like you got to do what you got to do to support your family or even furthermore even uh pay for your career and um voc vocational rehab and they they welcome you they welcome you with open arms like they pay for your they pay for your it's school a, first off it's a government funded program that helps people get rehabilitated back into the community and yeah. through through careers well. <clears throat> and most states all states have it, and it's basically um, with the social services and the food stamp office. They pay you to uh, they get they pay you to come give you a stipend, come to school every day, all that. Like, well, they give you a stipend to eat and for transportation to get you to and from school. So just trying to help people just get back in elevate elevate get yeah. back in the career get back into life because a lot of people need a chance a lot of people come out of jail they always feel judged and people do judge people come out of jail and they feel like they don't have no hope they don't have a chance to get back to civilization and just do the basic necessities of life to support themselves and their families. I mean, sometimes you get put against the wall because it's hard to find a job you come out, or at least right. a good paying job, something to support you. And you coming out, you need money, you know, to take care of your family and get back into, you, you probably ain't, you ain't got nothing. You coming out, everything probably been sold or thrown away at that point. So you got to buy everything that you need. You know, right now we all got a closet full of clothes. You come out, you ain't got no clothes, you ain't right. got nothing. So. And nobody wants to be judged because you don't know what's going through your mind. You're like, all I want is a chance. Mm -hmm. And what what usually happens end up a lot of times, people don't have a chance they resort to what they did before. And I always felt that if you give someone an opportunity just to better themselves and show them that there's a way for them to take care of themselves and their family, not, more often than not, they will choose that path. But if you don't have no direction, no blueprint to get to where you want to be, it's difficult. Yeah, it can be. Like, I think school is very important because you can... Me personally, like I feel like if I'm not in school, I'll probably be out there doing something I shouldn't be doing. You know what I'm saying? Like instead I'm in school learning something that I love to do. Like and I'm staying out the way. You know what I'm saying? Like by the time I finish school, like between studying and uh and the hours at school, I'll be dog tired by the time I get home. Like, yeah. So Especially you cutting, you've been on your feet all day and yeah, studying. Yeah, like I remember the first time I uh, I came back and I'm on the floor and I'm on the floor for a while 
Man, I had these shoes right here on. And they ain't got no soles. <laughs> <laughs> I told Craig outside, I said, man, I got to get some other shoes real quick. These right here. Man, these just hurt my feet. Yeah, you know, you can't come to school with Tim's on. He don't have Tim's on, but he got some comfortable what, Louis Vuitton. He got some Louis Vuitton shoes yeah, on. Yeah, they're just as fire. Yeah. <laughs> but, you, but cutting with, with shoes that with no soles, you, you walking barefooted. <laughs> nah, I learned that lesson. Yeah, you, you doing you walk you got some heels on in the shop. Look, I was playing basketball yesterday with little homies. And man, look, broke my ankles. <laughs> I did them though. I beat them. I beat them when we was playing 21. I beat them, but look, that that little slip and fall hurt. So so what inspired you to want to tell your story? Um you. You told me if I want do I want to come up here? Nah, but uh I feel like it's real important cuz I wish I would have had somebody when I when I was growing up. Uh, it wasn't nothing but the older older guys on the block. Man, we all know what they was doing. So um, that's who I looked up to. You know what I'm saying? Like I ain't really had nobody uh, that had the same style, the same attitude, swag as them, but wanted to do something different. You know what I'm saying? Like so. And that was it. And like. Uh, I feel like if if more people like my son, he uh, the one that I brought up there. I got two sons, seventeen and sixteen. And like, and my seventeen year old, he's talking about wanting to uh, go to barber school now. And like, but my fourteen year old, he really and like he already done bought his first set of trimmers and everything. And like, and how does that make you feel? It makes me feel good, like, cause I'm a I'm a groom him at a young age. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want him to. I want him to go to college and and do something real big, but barbering is big in itself. Like, so if I can go ahead and get him into school at sixteen, he he get his barber license before he uh, we was already talking about this before right. he graduates. <clears throat> that's like a little side hustle while he's in college. You yeah, know what I'm saying like, and then by then I've been in own multiple shops, so I can just go ahead and hand him one down, like. So we had a student competition, this in in house competition. Um, it wasn't the fades and flows as we do it in the evening, but we just started to do something different. We had it on a Saturday morning and it started at ten o'clock, and it was a big success because all the students was looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. And my whole thing behind it is just kind of make them feel a little comfortable before we do the big fades sh- and flows. Yeah, the big because some students just you got to twist their arms, their feet, and 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 their fingers to get them to participate. And they usually get more hype. Yeah. Like the ones that sit out are like, man, I'm gonna, I should have done that. I would have done it. I'm going to go back and do it. But when I had it in school, everybody was hyped for like weeks. You know what I'm saying? It's like, man, I can't wait. And the Shannon one. I'm coming for that fades and flows too. <laughs> so talk about you participating in the fades and flows in in-house competition and you having your son as your client. And talk about that, what was going through your mind when you did that and how it made you feel to win it. Uh. It was great, and like it was the it was the uh, booster that I needed. Because sometimes you're being screwing, like if you, you know, you you doing uh, people that you don't know's hair, like you in a area, you in a in a classroom where you cutting in front of people that you don't know at all, and that's that's a whole lot different than cutting at your house. And like you all the way comfortable cutting at your house, cutting on your homeboys or something. Mm-hmm. But uh, man, when I won. Cause it was it was students that was there that had already done had their hours and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know it was more experienced than me because they didn't got uh, those reps in. So when I won, it was like, and they were some they were some good barbers. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when I won, it just gave me that that ego booster that I needed. Like, so and then every now and then you'll have Craig come in there and, and say, "Yeah, man, Deshaun is a beast of a barber," or. He'll shout me out in front of the whole um in front of the whole school. So then like I'll go into school like the next like every morning I go into school, I remind myself, you a beast of a bar. I got this. You know what I'm saying? I'm like whenever I feel like you know how like you'll mess up or something, or you really won't mess up, but you'll get ahead of yourself in the cut. Yeah. I just remind myself I'm a beast of a barber. You kind of lost. You mean like you kind of lost in the cut? Yeah, yeah. Like I, I I won the last competition. You got this. <laughs> like so, I, I did a haircut. Uh, probably about it was last year sometime about six months ago, and the I didn't do what he wanted. The kid I told him I asked if he wanted to fade, and I didn't communicate well. You know, I ended up giving him a ball fade, and I was like, "Man, you ever had a ball fade in the middle of the cut?" I was like, "You had a ball fade before, right?" And he's like, "Like 
skin? I was like, yeah. He's like, no. Nah. I was like, oh, man, Lord, help me, Jesus. <laughs> help me. And I got I, I labored through that cut. I gave it to him for free because he never had a ball fade. And I was so tore up. I hit Craig up. I had to call him. I was like, and Craig was like, am I you won for 444, man? You good. <laughs> That's not like, bro. Because I, I actually have my, well, I wouldn't say it as a mess up, but I guess it was just, like you said, like a miscommunication. Miscommunication, yeah. And, but he was from Spain, so he couldn't really speak. Like, you know, it was kind of hard for me to to get that. To articulate what he wanted. Yeah. And he had a picture. And I was like, so you want this? He was like, yes. So I was like, so you want fade? Like, fade on the sides? And he was like, yeah. You know, I was like, okay. So I did the I did the haircut just how it is in the picture. And he was like, his friends was there. And he was looking at him. And it was like, it was like going like this. And I was like, oh, man. And he was like, he said, he was always shaking his head. And I was like, bro. I he shook his head? Yeah. Oh, man. And I was like, oh, But that's man. the transparency that people need to understand, right? Yeah. yeah. Like three different barbers at three different stages in their careers in school, just got out of school, and you've been out of school for a minute, mm. <clears throat> and you're being transparent enough to let people know that, hey, you're human. You're going to mess up. 100%. I did, I did it the other day. I'll be doing it. It happens. Yeah, I was tore right? up, man. Yeah. I mean, for real. Like, Kobe was like, man, why are you so, you know, sad about it? I said, bro, because I just don't. Yeah, I like you want to service you people. Make, you can't make everybody happy, but no. you got. I want to be perfect. Right. This is me, though. I remember like, in the shop seven, eight years in when I did a bad haircut, and and they still it messed with me. It was far and few between, and it messed with me. And I was like, man, I hated that. I think I remember almost every terrible haircut I've done, yeah. at least knowledgeably. <laughs> y'all talking, y'all talking about messing up. I remember I'm locked up one time, and everybody <laughs> knew that I could cut hair. Everybody knew I was in uh, that I was going to barber school. And man, look, so we uh we in the feds like and we had a holding facility, so like you can only come out like an hour a day every other day, you know what I'm saying? Like and two hours the next day. So uh so my homeboys was like it was uh it was clipper day. So they ended up getting me out on their day. I'm like, heck yeah, I wanna come out. And like Yeah. So he let me out and we got the uh we got the guard breathing down our neck, like, man, y'all hurry up. I'm like <laughs> And already, like, I got Dang. PTSD real bad from where I'm, where I got shot. So, like, I don't need all that in my life. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, uh, yeah, so needless to say, I messed this dude up, right? And, like, I heard him. We used to talk through the vents. Yeah. And, like, this is how you communicate. <laughs> so, as soon as we got to the room, as soon as I got to my cell, I put my ear to the vent. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I wanted to get the feedback real quick. <laughs> He said, he said, reckless man, I never listened to you again, man. <laughs> like, messed him up because it had been a while since I was cutting hair. Like, uh, like, and I had all kind of stuff on my mind and everything. And everybody could hear the vent too, right? Look, the next morning when he came out for, uh, because it was a little dark too, you know what I'm saying? Like, the lights was already off and everything. Next morning, the lights was bright <laughs> to death. He came, we came out for, we came out for breakfast. <laughs> And I couldn't believe I did that. Like, <laughs> and like, I'm sitting there watching his table, and everybody, you see everybody, like, yeah, man, he, they pointing at the, <laughs> <laughs> put the spotlight on. Yeah, man, look, I got on the phone with my girl, man. I said, man, look, hey, I, I think I even shed a tear. Like, I, I started crying to my girl. I ain't gonna lie, I did. Like, uh, you leaned up on the wall like this. I told her, I said, man, they over here making fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was tragic. Tragic. <laughs> That's funny. I mean, I, I think it. I mean, I don't think there's ever a stage where you, you either. I mean, I, I think when more you get into barbering, it becomes more of a miscommunication than it is right. so much a mistake. But we yes. still make mistakes. I still make mistakes too. But like you said earlier, it's just you can't stop learning. No. You have to continuously learn. And sometimes you got to be humble, too. That's why yeah. you got to keep that enhancement on deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Sharpie. Yeah, yeah, you keep that cover up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you have to. But so, and also, but I want to also ask you another question. Um, we talked about you winning that, um, that competition. But also, you said a lot of kids in the neighborhood was kind of picking you up and looking up to you and wanting you to cut the hair after you talked about winning that competition. I think it was that, yeah, because it was on a Saturday, right? Yeah. That Saturday, like, I had a whole house full of uh, heads to cut. That's awesome. Yeah. But I wasn't, I wasn't thinking, like, because I had already told them I went up on my price because uh that competition. <laughs> then I you were serious about that? I was serious. I was serious. <laughs> but then I should have I should have went up an extra $20, $40 because they wanted me to cut their hair before the club. Like, and it was like, it was like 11, 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah. Like, Dang. 
But you know, I, I just love cutting, so like I come out for that. But yeah. I'm letting you know right now. You call but, me. But uh, how did that make you feel that those kids in your neighborhood was even like proud of you for winning that? It made me feel good. It made me feel great. And like, yeah, it made me feel great. I think I got I, I rushed on one cut and I forgot to line him up in the back. Yeah. And like he wanted a high taper, and like that was like my first high taper idea. But what have been some of the, of the biggest lessons you have learned on this journey? Never quit. Uh, don't trade in. Uh, don't trade in your passion for temporary glory. Mm. You know that's what I'm saying? Deep. Like so. That's deep. Yeah, like if you getting money. Uh, popularity, whatever, all that stuff fades, it comes and goes, but your passion is going to stay there. So sometimes it can die, but God has to resurrect it, but just don't ever give up. Because I could have been doing this when I was 16, and then just imagine all the things that I wouldn't have had to go through, what I wouldn't have to put my people through, you know what I'm saying? We could have been on your podcast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah. Boom, like, everything's coming. Everything's coming. I, I've learned from God that sometimes things that get uh, postponed, like, you know, um, when the children of Israel was going to the uh, promised land, like, that was like an 11-day journey but because of unbelief. 40 years. 40 years, you know what I'm saying? Like, And that's the way I look at it. I'm like, man, it's been, what, about 17, 18 years. But you're there. <clears throat> yeah. How have you grown and changed since you began your story? Since when? Since um, you're getting to barber school the first time, how have you grown and changed? I'm more serious about it now. Like those little three years, I was locked up, and like it was, it was really like a a, a slap in my face, and um, and uh, just like being laughed at. You don't want to be laughed at no more. It's like doing a messed up cut. You you didn't you ever mess up on a cut? Then you go watch heck of tutorials. Yeah. Like, just to make sure you get the next one right. You yeah. might even talk your next client into getting this cut just yeah. so you can go ahead and perfect it. And like so that's what it is for me. Like I uh it's times where it's times where I don't even feel like getting up and going to school. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I I make sure I do. Get those hours in. What has been the most rewarding part of your journey? No smiles on people's face. When you when you know you done put them in the game or mm -hmm. or they done been going to a they they've been going to another barber that been pushing them back, but you bring them back to life. Mm. Like, that's it. I'm like I I could care less about the money. It's more it's more uh, what I get out of it. You know what I'm saying? Like you you get a sense like people need you. Mm -hmm. What has been the most surprising thing you've experienced? And this right here. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I ain't I ain't no camera or or like I've always been a people person, but in the streets that take you out of being like that, you know what I'm saying? Like so, and just opening back up, like and uh and and being on that being in front of that school, just like I was having a conversation with uh <laughs> with a guy at a gas station. And I had the smock on. I was talking to you about this, right. and I had the name tag right there. Like, and he was he was getting gas to go to his job. I was getting gas to go to school. And just the conversation. I had some Jordans on. Uh, what's the patent leather? Uh, I think they the Elevens, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had those on. And he was like, "Man, I ain't seen those in a while." And you could tell we was just from two different parts of the world, you know, uh, yeah. uh, life. And like, just us being able to hold a conversation like in and <clears throat> him doing something for his kids, me doing something for my family. Like so Is the conversation part something you struggle with still? Or do you feel like you're getting better at it? <clears throat> Talking to people. Why you cut their hair yet? No, like when I'm when I'm uh behind that chair, I'm in my zone. Word. Like right here is is a little different for me because it's my first time. Yeah. I tell y'all like I tell my clients, uh if you knew, if you're a new client, give me give me about two three cuts. I I get you together. You know what I'm saying? Like let me get used to you real quick. But uh, yeah, so I'm a little nervous right now. But behind that chair, this you and you and my world, then. So.
So I know it's your first time on the podcast. What do you think of the podcast? What do you like about it? It's great. That's great. I might just come here next time y'all just to sit in the background. Like that way I'll be ready the next time y'all want me on here. I'm, you did great. Yeah, you yeah, did I kind of want to sit back just like that and you can and talk yeah. to you like that. But uh yeah. So hearing his story, Jordan, what what, you, what do you think about what 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 really just hit you about his story? You man, you remind me of my brother so much. Yeah, and I and um, it gives me hope because seeing you do it knows that I means I, I'm not going to give up on my brother. I'm going to keep on pushing and telling him to do what he needs to do, you know, to be able to provide for his family as well. You know, I mean, I'm he, glad. He you probably got to listen to the podcast. I know. I know. But he's just, he's, he's hard headed, man. But I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to give up on him. I'm going to keep trying to get him in there. And I'm gonna, he Because I know he wants it, but he just needs the person to push him, you know. What do you what'd you pick up my mind from this podcast? What'd I mean, you're my new favorite barber now, hands down. Like I'm excited to watch you grow, see you graduate and move on from that because just to hear your story and where you came from, I'm inspired. It makes me want to go out and get it even harder. And, you know, because I just I mean, it, there's levels to this. It doesn't stop. You keep going, keep going. And just to hear your story really inspires me. And, and I'm following you on Instagram and I'm gonna keep track of your, your your progress. And I'm excited to see how you grow. Appreciate that. Fin follow through, finish this, finish this time up. Then we had a graduation, catch you at the graduation. I'm, I'm excited to see you go. Yeah, it's gonna be dope, bro. I can tell you really got a pass. Yeah, man. It's, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I can just feel it. And and the thing with people don't realize is a lot of people are rooting for you. A lot of people wanna want you to do good. And Anxiety is normal when you're starting something new. Anxiety is normal when you've failed at something because everybody wants the likes on Facebook. Everybody wants the applause. Everybody wants to be like congratulated. And wherever there's a will, there's a way. And what I get from this podcast most is don't give up. When you find out what your why is and you and it becomes your passion, sometimes it, it, there might be some roadblocks. There might be some articles of, of 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 things that might be hindrance but don't stop wherever there's a will there's a way because once you get to that place and you you fulfill in that passion there's a joy and a happiness that overcomes you that you can't get nowhere else there's a joy and a happiness that you can't buy with silver or gold and that's what it's about finding your why finding your happiness finding your Finding that candy world. Yeah. Like in my mind I'm thinking, you know, don't and don't trade your why for don't don't drop your why for what you want right now. You keep you, you hold on to your why the whole way and your why will give you what you want. Yes. It's crazy that you say if there's a will, there's a way, because you remember those little two, three weeks that I was out of school. Like I was having trouble with getting back and forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, cause like you said, uh you you go do some time Nine times out of ten, you come home, you really ain't got nothing no more. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything's gone. So, like, I ain't had no car. And, um, boom, I was I was struggling with getting back and forth to school, like, because the car situation. But where there's God's will, he'll make a way. Like, come to find out it was a it was a, a, a guy in my school, at, at school or whatever, drives by my house every day. Like just to get to school, you know what I'm saying? Like so, it's a level of accountability too, because you like he coming by. If you ain't gonna get up, you know what I'm saying? He know you ain't getting up. You ain't coming but, but, to school. But the, but the caveat with that is, it was for a whole week. Maybe we, we he couldn't find a ride, mm -hmm. and we was trying to. It was about out two weeks. Two weeks. I'm like, man, let me try to make something happen. You know what I'm saying plug some buttons. I'm like, hey, who live where? Hell, let me call. And it was like over like a conversation at night. Yo, let me call this person and I'm going to have them call you back and we're going to get you in school. Because when you know somebody's determined to get through something, you want to you wanna root for them. You want to do as much as you can to help them. Yeah. And that's something I always do. You know what I mean? If a student is going through a problem trying to find a ride to school, I'm gonna try, I will try to connect the dots some way, somehow to get you there. And that was big that he did that because, you know, a lot of people ain't caring about all that. So Craig ended up calling me. And, uh, yeah, dude came pick me up. He was like, man, you stay here? I'm like, yeah. He's like, man, I drive by here every day. I'm like, and then that, that really, uh, that let me know that I need to pick my faith up more because, you know what I'm saying? Like, had I would have, I felt like if I would have just had more faith in God, I could have. I could have been and connected the dots. And then you upset about all that time that you stressed about the stuff that you were yeah. stressing about. Yeah. When you know when you just could have let it go and it would have happened. Yeah. That's big. 
Man, this was this was an, an inspiring podcast. It was know? dope. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. it was dope. I mean, we getting man, we getting somebody go serious or somebody gonna hit us up. So I can feel it. <laughs> Jay, Jay need to hit us up. Yeah, Jay Z. Jay Z. Yeah, yeah, man. He's, he already. Nah, we, we gonna we gonna have Jay Z on the podcast in Madagascar. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> in Madagascar. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, we 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 giving good energy. You know, and we talking about mental health. We talking about. Inspiration. We're talking about upliftment. We're talking about the whole nine. You know what I mean? Just trying to, again, this podcast is for anybody out there who's trying to level up, who need that extra push, that extra toggle to finish school, that extra just kind of like, hey, man, you're not out there by yourself doing this on your own. There's so many people who have the same stories just like you. There's so many people who go through the same things that you're going through. You're not by yourself. This journey is... is you, when you're on this journey, you, you can finish it. There's people who are willing to help you if you help yourself. Everybody has normal anxiety. Everybody, everyone can sit back and feel bad for themselves. But the thing is, ask for help. There's plenty of resources out there like vocational rehab, which is in every city, every state, who's giving people chances to go to school for free. Free. Paying for I got a big box of uh, barber equipment. New clippers and everything. And what's crazy is right before that, and like, because I had my clippers before uh, I went in or whatever, but then my son started playing with him. He don't know how to oil them and all that, so a lot of them didn't work. And you remember when I uh, when I whipped that kid, you showed me the little. Yeah. <clears throat> I only had like one pair of working trimmers. And I went home discouraged that day like, man, I'm about to quit, man. I ain't got no clippers. I'm like I'm over here whelping kids. <laughs> like I'm, I'm scared for his mom to get back. <laughs> like I got him turned this way, that way she can't see. Put water on it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh man, real quick, hopefully it but gets away by the time she get there. Yeah, yeah. I'm like let me just go ahead and meet her at the door. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the crazy thing is, the next week it never it never uh, fails. How God amazes me. And like the next week, I got a big box from the school that vocational rehab paid for with everything in it I needed. Everything and some. So, major, major. As all good things last, all good things got to, like this podcast. I mean, I, we can go and speak forever, but this is our time is up. Our time is coming up. So, what's the last words you want to say, um, Jordan? And uh, <laughs> this dude took over the podcast today, and uh, I'm glad he came. I'm glad you told us our story, your story. I'm sure there's a lot of people that listen to the podcast that you've helped, you know, inspire. And I'm glad I got to meet you. And like, you just keep striving for greatness, bro. You're gonna, you're on a great path, great path to the greatest success. What you think, am I? I I'm thinking about. I want to hear some people's like funny mistake, like. The mistakes they made in the barbershop. So there's got to be a whole, like, millions of mistakes that people's made that have been hilarious. So I, like, I want to hear. Because we're not the only one who made no, mistakes. No, nah, nah, I would like to hear, like, we should get, like, some series going or something, like, mistakes made in the shop. But, but no, nah, this is a great podcast. It's probably one of the best ones we ever had. Yep. Uh, thank you for coming. You did wonderful, man. You did a great job. Yeah, what's your last words again to just the people out there, the casual observer who just listening to you today, and where can they find you? And don't give up. Follow me uh, on Instagram, Shannon underscore Bradley. Again, like us, share it, follow us. We on Instagram, we on Facebook. Send us a, a message if you want um, feedback. We'll hit you back as quick as possible. Um, we have a ton of messages that we have to try and get back to, and we're getting back to them in the appropriate time. Um, again, we love our followers. We love what we do. We spend some time just putting some content together for you guys. Barbara Cause Success brought to you by Craig Charles of Crown Cuts Academy, JC, and Crown Cuts Academy, Bristol, Virginia. Spreading love the Tri-City way is one way, but spreading love the Crown Cuts way is the only way. Check us out. We do enrollment the first Tuesday of every month in both schools. We have five, pro several programs. We have cosmetology, we have barbering, we have aesthetics and manicuring. Hey, we also do the instructor program. Check us out. We offer the GI Bill, vocational rehab. We also offer financial aid. So if you need some help getting into school, hit us up. We'll get you there. Come grab and get on this career. 
It's going to get you in a path that's going to change your life forever. Peace. Peace.